Hi guys, it's Mrs. Claus again, and I'm here with Gumdrop. So, let's find the 19th. Oh, she found it right off the bat. Turmeric golden, uh, turmeric gold, I'm sorry, turmeric gold. A golden organic blend of the finest turmeric, lemon fruit, and whole leaf green tea. Okay, there's what this is. Okay, we're on the last six days, so here's the 19th. Oh, it's a stocking! Oh, oh isn't that so precious? Cute. Oh, that's so precious. We'll share that in the pictures. 19, I found it. By doing this, I found it. Well, we only have a few days left anyway. Is it going to be the newest car in the Claus household? Oh, no. I don't know. It reminds me of Bumblebees. It reminds me of Bumblebee from the um, Transformer movie. You ever seen that movie? I haven't seen it in years. Let's see if this car does the same thing. Whoa! Whoa! Woo! That was fun. <laughs> we'll have to have a race later. Maybe if Joy lets us play with her cars. Yeah. Okay, the 19th on the makeup is up here. I spotted it. Yes, you did. Is it going down? Going sideways. Hello. Oh, it looks like a sharpener and maybe a brush. It was in the opening. There's the brush. Now, let's see if I can get the pencil sharpener. Here's the pencil sharpener. And in purple. Isn't that fitting? Because that's one of Joy's favorite colors. Okay, guys. I hope you'll enjoy the video coming up next. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. the advent calendars out of the way I'm going to share with you guys a couple of crafts and for this first one you're going to need a two of these Dollar Tree signs with the tree the red truck and the tree two crates you can either get this tile that has no uh, slat they're not the slatted kind or you can get the slatted kind they both work very well for this or should look very well for it. Paint brushes and paint. You're going to need red, white, and black. I have green just because I have it on the table. You'll need a pair of scissors, a paintbrush, some hot glue, which is right there, and you'll need something to put your paint on, um, which I have a paint palette. Well, actually, I have a paper plate that we used the other night too. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to unravel, well actually the first thing you're going to want to do is cut off the sign tag. Okay, I'm going to do that real quick. And you'll discard that. Then you're going to unwind this garland and you're going to want to take your scissors and go up under the back of the tree. Now if you want to make this for Christmas and you want to leave the tree, don't do that. But on one of them, you will need to do that. So of the two, you'll want to do at least one of them you want to take the tree off of. So you want to get up under there with one part of the scissors. Be very careful. If there's a kid doing this, make sure you got an adult supervision because Mrs. Claus has come very close to hurting herself, and she's an adult. So, oh, and you also need a nail file. So you just want to kind of go up under there, and you want to wedge under there until you get it loosened. And then once you get it loosened and you pop it off, there are staples on some of these. Take your scissors and push down on the staples so that they don't, they aren't popping onto you and hurting you. And then just set your trees aside for a future. And then you'll want to set your trees aside for a future crap. And then the next step is we're going to take some more off this truck. On one of the trucks, the same one that you took the tree off of, you're going to want to take off your oil wells and your cab. So, I've already took the wheel well off of one, as you can see, so I did that. And then I took the cab and the wheel well off of another one. And then I took the cab, the wheel well, all off. So, this is going to be the one I work with today. Because I plan to make several of these, so that's why I have them. And then this is the other one. So, you've got the two trucks that look like this, okay? So, one has all the parts off. You're going to want to keep your parts nearby. So if you have your crew that you took the wheel wells and all that off of, is the one that you want to turn so that the brown side of it is showing toward you. 
But if you don't want to, that's fine. And if you're making this for Christmas, you don't have to worry about the Christmas. But if you aren't, what I would say is take the file and go over it. Because while that glitter is beautiful, we don't need it. And you'll want to take a rag over this once you get it all sanded off. Thank you. As much of it off as you can and you've wiped it down, you're going to set that aside for a moment. I am going to do this other one too, even though we're painting the other side. And this will be covered over. going to do for that so as you can see I took a lot more of that off so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some paint on my paint palette and we're, I'm going to go over the one that has the cab door and that we're going to paint just that in red and then we'll go on to the other one so I'm going to put some paint on my paint palette which is just a paper plate this time and I'm going to take a sponge brush and I'm going to dab 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 and then I'm going to pull it down pull it down and cover it the best you can and then if you want you can go over the rest of it it'll just make it fade more into it so you don't see that Merry Christmas you can go over it a few times if you need to and you might want to just kind of hit the whole front of that truck a little bit so, so there we have it Okay, so that's all I'm going to do, and now I'm going to let that one dry. Um, actually, I think I'm going to just paint over that real quick. And then I'm going to let that dry. And the only thing you really have to paint over is just around those red spots that are kind of messed up because you took the items off. And around the uh, Christmas sign, you know. Like I said, though, if you're making this for Christmas time and you want to keep it, go for it. You do you. I'll do me. There we go. So we're just going to let that dry a little bit. Um, and while that's drying, I'm going to do the next thing, which is take this. And I'm going to paint the cab top because when I flip the cab over that one won't be in the right spot so I'm just gonna paint the back of my cab piece so when we put it on we've got the right spot going on you know it won't be oh I gotta paint it now this will kind of make more sense in a moment and then you want to get oops and you want to get paint all over your hands so you feel like a real crafter. Go for it. It's fun. It's what Mrs. Claus does every day. Paint, paint, paint. So that's all you got to do. So that one will be the inside. So I'm going to set that back here. Uh, the wet, wheel wells you don't need to because they will show up on the right spots. So I'm going to set them out of the way. Now what I am going to do, you could do the whole box or you can do what I'm going to do, which is just paint along the top of your crate like so and don't worry if it goes down on the sides a little bit because that won't show so much and you could also use this as a flower box if you wanted to if you wanted to make like a um, flower arrangement you could use this now I'm going to paint this back end of my truck and the front end of my truck so it's all red okay like that now I'm not going to do the other end of this one because that's going to be um, up against the other one so we're going to leave that go now we're just going to do the top and the opposite end so there we go now I'm going to let those two dry and while they're drying this one should be almost dry enough let's feel it oh yeah we're pretty dry so we're going to flip the one that has the cab and everything off and now we're going to take and paint the whole thing red 
Now, normally I would put newspaper under this, but I forgot to grab newspaper, so I'm just going to put this bag under it. Just in case there is any more paint left, or in case I get a little excited and overpaint. So, um, you don't have to worry too much about, like, around the cab area, because that's going to be covered by the cab piece. What are they called? Wheel wells. Sorry, the wheel wells. I like to take and put them down, and then I like to paint around them with my paint. Then I like to take and do it over here too, just setting it down. And then now we're gonna go in here and while I've got that there, I'm gonna put a little black on my plate. And I'm going to take a small brush this time, this one, and I'm just gonna dip in that black. And I'm going to go right inside that wagon, the wheel well. And I'm going to make a mark. Then I'm going to go over here and do the same. So I'm going to line that up really well. And I'm going to make a mark of where my wheel should be. Now, what I can do is I can take my red paint and a small paintbrush and go around that area should I want to. But I am going to just paint this wheel right here. So it kind of looks a little like the other one and you can have your other one handy if you need to. Okay, then I'm going to take my water and rinse my brush. Try to brush it off. Then I'm going to add some white paint to my palette. And I'm just going to go in the center of this black circle and make the wagon or the wheel part white. The, so it's like it's got a hubcap there. And you know, it don't have to be perfect, but if you want it to be perfect, go for it. Do it your way. Um, it, everybody's their own boss when it comes to how you want to put your craft together, how you want things to look in your life. Don't let anybody else tell you what you need to do to make you happy when it comes to the crafting and stuff. So it kind of looks like that now. And we're going to let that dry a little bit. But also I'm going to go over this wet wheel well area and I'm going to take my little brush and I'm going to take red paint and I'm just going to paint this area. So there's what the truck looks like. We're going to let that dry a little bit. Um, while that's drying, I'm going to take the other truck and we're going to check it out and make sure we're satisfied. So there's what that looks like. Looking good. Now, I'm going to take and put these two together. I'm going to set it on the truck. And I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm going to glue around here. Oops, got some glue on the handle. 
Okay. And then I'm going to line these up. Okay. Line those up and just glue them together. And we're going to let them set. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to glue them to the set, the truck. And I like to glue it right about the bottom of the truck. So right about there. So the wheels are the base of this, but it's really close to the bottom of the truck. Boo boo on her glue gun. And we're just going to set that down, let it dry. And then once that's dry, ooh, I got paint. Okay. We're going to do the same with the other side. We're going to line the truck up as best we can. So we're going to stand this up on the This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the glue right on the crate and just go all the way across. There we go. That looks good. Now we're going to go right there and we're going to take it up a little bit and we're just going to line that up the best we can and that's all you got to do hopefully our glue is hot enough we're going to put it right along this wheel well spot right here and then we're going to put the glue gun down and we're going to lay this wheel well right on there and just making sure that we get it on there the way we want it. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to put the other wheel well on. And then we're going to take our cab piece and we're going to put it on here. So I'm going to put the glue on the back of the cab piece that was there and put it just on there instead of putting it on the cat on the truck itself okay there we go okay and then we're going to just put it down on here and we're going to press it in place and then there we go we have a remote control holder guys and it's just uh, about a four dollar little remote control holder maybe about five dollars to make your remote control holder when you figure out the amount of paint you use and it is so cute and um, both Joy and her mom have enjoyed using the one I made them for Christmas and this one would probably hold even more remotes but the one I made them for Christmas holds at least four remotes uh, they have their DVR remote their DVD player their um TV and their VCR, or not VCR, Roku remotes in there. So they are able to hold quite a few, but it's just cute. You could also put in styrofoam and put in flowers if you wanted to, which I might do to one of these. Um, but I think in the end, that is just so cute, don't you? Comment down below what you think of this remote control holder. Uh, I had these games called Heart to Heart, and they're the conversation cards. I have three of them. I have the first, second, and third edition. I think I did one of these in one of my videos, but I pulled out some cards from two of them, the two that I haven't done, that I'm going to answer the questions as best as I can. And, okay. Who may, has made you laugh more than anyone? Ooh. I have a few people that can make me laugh pretty hard. But I think probably it would either be my mom or my dad. Both of them could crack me up. My siblings are also. But don't ever tell my brother I admit that. He thinks he's funny. I try not to let him think that. Choose Coke or Pepsi. It depends on my mood. But right now it's Pepsi mostly. But once in a while I'll go Coke. And there's no rhyme or reason. Just whichever one's not bothering my assets for me. What is your favorite flower and why? Um... 
For me, it's the red rose, and I think it's just because it's so beautiful, and it has a way of protecting itself with the thorns. So it's just a kind of a, you can be beautiful and protect it and still admired. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, what is the name of your fa all-time favorite TV character? TV character. Whew. There's been some good ones. Uh, that one's hard because I don't have an all-time favorite that I can think of. Okay, I do have one that, uh, a couple that I will say. I always liked Balky Bartokamus from um, Perfect Strangers because he was this uh, he was this immigrant who got so excited about everything, and he always called this guy that he was living with cousin Larry. And it was just kind of funny the way he interacted with the guy he was living with and everything. And then Urkel. I always liked Urkel because he was just the nerd that was so cool at the same time. Yeah. And I liked the underdog characters. I'm always like an underdog character. I like the underdog who ends up being the coolest person you know because they're really not as uncool as everybody thinks they are. They're the people that are going to grow into who they are and they're going to never they're going to always be glad that they were true to themselves. That kind of person. That's my favorite character. If any actor could play you in the story of your life, who would it be? It'd have to be some plus size woman. <laughs> um honestly, I don't think I know but <laughs> it would be an up and coming newbie. I honestly think it would be an up-and-coming newbie because I can't see any current actor or actress playing me. Um, to be honest. I can't see anybody that could play. Could fit in your shoes? Yeah, fit in my clothes. <laughs> okay. You just won $50 million in the lottery. What's the first thing you do? Pay off all my debt. I owe some money and I... Um, would pay that off. And as soon as that's paid off, then the fun thing I would do is remodel my house. Have you ever spent time in jail even as a visitor? What did you come away with from your experience? Yes, I have been a visitor in jail. Um, I went and visited somebody who was in jail. What I come away from that experience was a deeper understanding of how much I cared about the person. Um, and how little they cared about me. Okay, if you could touch someone's life, who would it be and why? I think some young person who is headed down a path where, like, where my life has already been, I'd want to touch their life and say, hey, you know, it's going to be a bumpy road, and strap in, it's going to make you an amazing person in the end. Do you believe dreams can come true? Yes, I absolutely believe dreams can come true. You just have to put the work into them, and you have to be willing to, you know, um, ask for help when the time's needed. <clears throat> what is the name of the best book you've ever read? What 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 is it about? Oh, my God, this is going to be a whole video down the road, guys. I will save this question because that I have a bunch of books, and I can, oh, yeah, I, this is a topic I can talk way too much on, so let's go on. Um, what makes you smile? Explain. Very good jokes, funny memes. Uh, People when they're laughing, actually. Whenever I see somebody who's smiling at me, it makes me smile. Um, when I think about certain people, I just smile. It's just because they are such a positive person in my life or they've affected me in a good way. I honestly can't say what makes me smile. There's so much that makes me smile. You guys make me smile. When I read you guys' comments, a lot of times that does make me smile. Or gals, whatever. I, I call everybody guys. I'm sorry. Uh, what attracts you first to the opposite sex and why? <laughs> Funny enough, smiles. Um, smiles and eyes are the first two things I'm physically attracted to. Voices are the first, like, um, non-physical ca characteristic that I'm attracted to. But the biggest thing that I'm attracted to is the heart. And why? Because a smile usually means that the person is 
a friendly person. Usually now I've seen people that it doesn't work that way. Um, and eyes tell us so much more when you pair it with the smile. The eyes will tell you whether being they're being sincere or not. And then their voice, it, voice is just something that, there's certain tones that just grate on my nerves, and that has to do with my anxiety, and there's certain ones that just calm me completely. Okay, who has the prettiest smile in the world? Why do you think that? Hmm. I don't believe there's just one prettiest smile in the world. I, um... Uh, it depends on my mood. My mom has one of the most beautiful smiles I've ever seen. My sister has one of the most beautiful smiles I've ever seen, and yet she's very self-conscious about it and I feel bad about that because I love her smile I absolutely adore my sister's smile and I've always thought that um so when she smiles yeah, yeah when she smiled like when she was younger like in her senior pictures one of my favorite pictures of my sister because she has such a beautiful smile to me that's just I don't know. It's unique to her, and it makes me feel comfort seeing my sister smile. So, okay, so that's the questions I had for this round. Um, comment down below the answers to any of these questions you want to share with me. I love hearing your guys' answers to my questions that I answer. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed getting to know me a little better through this. Uh, and if there's anything that you guys would like to know about me, feel free to ask the questions. Um, um, it can be as simple as my favorite color, which happens to be purple still. I think I answered that on my first one. Or if you guys want me to go back and redo the first video, see if my answers have changed or if I'm still the same, let me know that too. Okay, guys, so that's the video for today and yesterday. I'm sorry it's going up really late tonight, but I've had a lot going on again today. Um, and I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will catch you hopefully in tomorrow's video. I hope you have a good day, and I hope it's as beautiful and wonderful as you are. We'll catch you next time. Bye, guys.